I've known Cynthia a long time. She loves students. She works in schools. She works with middle school students and high school students throughout Jefferson Parish. I've known her just about all of her life, but more important than anything else, she loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all her heart. And so, Cynthia, I'm sorry I skipped over the executive director and all the important things that you do. Come on up and speak to our families and speak to our children this morning. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Cynthia Sellers, and I am so thankful to be standing, sitting in front of all of you today and in front of our amazing graduates. Um, thank you, Mr. Riggs, for inviting me. Uh, thank you, faculty, for all that you've done for this wonderful school and how you invested in these young men and women. Thank you, parents, friends, and families, for showing your support for these young ladies and gentlemen who worked so hard to be here today. My name is Cynthia Sellers, and I am the executive director of a ministry based here in Metairie, but I'm also a graduate of Memorial Baptist Christian School. <laughs> and, you know, there are two things that I learned here in my time at Mor Memorial. I graduated from eighth grade here. There are two things I learned during my time here at Memorial that stand out the most. We learned a lot of other things, but these two things stand out. That Jesus loves me and he wants to be my best friend. Parents, you could have sent your children anywhere. I'm gonna tear up because this is so meaningful. You could have sent your child to a school that focuses only on academics, placing no importance whatsoever on the moral conduct of a student, but you didn't. You could have sent your child to a school that requires them to know their times tables by four and fluent Latin by five, but you didn't. And you could have sent your child to a school that emphasizes the student's choice to determine their own identity, their own education, and even their own gender. But you didn't. By sending your child to Memorial, you chose to invest not only in your child's education, but in their spiritual formation as well. You recognize that your child is not just an individual with a mind to be formed, but a one-of-a-kind masterpiece designed by God, made in the image of God, and created to serve God with their whole lives. They are spiritual beings with deeply impressionable souls and a future ripe with potential. So they are not just students who learned lessons to graduate, no. They are young men and women whose lives are God-ordained and are specifically set apart to make a difference in their world. So it is impossible for me to overemphasize the necessity of a Christian education. Why? Because I am a product of it. The very first scriptures I ever learned were right here at Memorial Baptist. Scriptures like Psalm 119, thy word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. And Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I learned those here and still remember them. Those scriptures were seeds of God's word planted in the soil of my soul that have produced fruit. Those scriptures that your children learn here will serve as guideposts, like the bumpers in a bowling alley directing them in the way that they should go. His word truly is a lamp to their feet, guiding the path in front of them. So parents, Keep God's scriptures in front of your children. Continue to reinforce everything that they've learned here because it's so much more than just alphabets and numbers. What they've learned here are scriptures and Bible lessons that will serve as lifelines that will rescue them in the rocky seas of life. So do not underestimate the power of a Christian education, but likewise, parents, do not underestimate the power of your parenting. A Pew Research study in 2020 said that most teenagers share the religion of their parents or legal guardians. For the parents who describe their belief system as Christian, the majority of those teenagers reported the same beliefs. Likewise, the majority of parents who describe their religion as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular, had teens who described their beliefs the same way. So these studies prove Proverbs 22, 6, which states, train up a child in the way he should go, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his life, 
and even when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So if you train a child to walk with Jesus, keeping him first in your life, the chances are very high that they will do the same. But likewise, if you train a child to keep God out of your life, only fitting him in if you have the time, they will do the same. So parents, do not rely on this Christian education alone. As wonderful as this administration is, they cannot teach your children how to walk with Jesus. Only you can. Investing in your child's education is important, like what Mr. Riggs said. I would not be standing here if my mom would not have worked a full-time job just so her entire paycheck could go to my tuition. I am forever grateful for that sacrifice, but when your children experience real pain, when they walk through unforeseen heartbreak, detrimental failure, or unbearable peer pressure, their education will not provide an escape. Their good grades will not conceal the consequences, and their LEAP and SAT scores will not deliver them from depression, anxiety, or from making painful, life-altering choices. Only their relationship with God will serve as a compass pointing towards true north. So invest in their education, but make sure their hearts are close to Christ. Because at the end of the day, that is the only thing that will keep them. Not you, not their scholarships, but Jesus and Jesus alone. So teach your children that Jesus loves them and that he wants to be their best friend, but parents, let them see it lived 